Vice is reporting, uh, and, and I guess they interviewed Carrie Goldberg, who represented the victims of Harvey Weinstein. Uh, here's the quote. Goldberg noted other issues with the NDA, among them that the copy that the victim filed in federal court in Connecticut wasn't actually signed by McMahon in either his personal capacity or role as then chair of WWE. Normally all parties would receive an executed copy of the contract. And it's interesting because he continues or, or law professor Jody short was interviewed by vice and said, it is my considered opinion that an NDA such as the one you sent me are unenforceable under common law contract doctrine, but there is very little case law squarely on point and litigating such a case would expose an individual to enormous cost and litigation risk. The idea of being quote unquote, they're not worth the paper they're written on. It's not just the paper. It's paper backed by an extreme asymmetry and resources between the two parties. So it continues to get ugly. The idea that Vince McMahon signed these on behalf of WWE, allegedly, we don't know. We haven't seen them and didn't disclose it anywhere. So I think they say in the wrestling business, maybe Vince went into business for himself here. And like I say, that just makes everything far more complicated and the stakes get even higher because I would imagine, again, I'm not an attorney. I don't want to try to sound like I know shit. I don't, but kind of just applying street smart common sense to the situation suggests that that is, that is fraud. Isn't it business fraud? Yeah. You're, 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 again, it's a public company. 25, 30 years ago, before it was a public company, you could get away with stuff like that. When you're a public public company, the rules change. And to commit, financially commit, contractually commit, and do it outside of the course of normal business and doing it secretly and not involving your general counsel, whoa, that's that's another level of fuck. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, man, it's uh it's bad every direction you look. And it's one of those deals where the more you uncover the worse it gets. And unfortunately I feel like it's, uh, probably going to be the end of a lot of careers and maybe Brock Lesnar. I want to ask you about that because, you know, he wasn't really mentioned in the rumble. We've learned through the observer that essentially they've just slid Braun into his spot. So when Braun was eliminated by Dominic Mysterio, that was supposed to be Brock Lesnar. So I guess, as the story goes, according to Dave Meltzer, it was supposed to be Dominic Mysterio and Brock Lesnar at Elimination Chamber and Gunther and Brock at WrestleMania, which has been a dream match that wrestling fans have wanted to see for a long time. But I don't know if we'll ever see it at this point. No. It, it, <laughs> you, know, you think they're doing everything they can to scrub them from the minds and memories of anybody associated with WWE? No, that that's not going to happen. I sincerely doubt we'll see him in the UFC anytime again. It's the same company. It's the that's same right. Thing. Involved. so that's not going to happen uh no i i'm yeah brock is barring something you know earth shattering which i don't even think is possible i don't even have an imagination vivid enough to try to create a fictional scenario where this outcome is going to result in people saying sorry brock we jumped the gun come on back nah, that's not going to happen not going to happen it's weird because you've seen Brock sort of leverage both sides for so long with both WWE and UFC, and now they're all the same company. So it makes me wonder, is Brock just going to be a private person? Will we ever see Brock Lesnar in a professional wrestling ring again, Eric, anywhere? Can't imagine it. I mean, maybe in Japan. Yeah. Because they're not, first of all, they don't care. They're the culture over there is so much different. They're not paying close attention. You don't have the political correctness. And I don't mean that in a derisive way. You don't have the kind of movements and, and awareness and focus that the media puts on things that we consume every day um, over there that they do here. So do, do, do I see a scenario where somebody could offer, you know, Brock a big chunk of cash to go over and perform in Japan where the audience isn't going to be, you know, turned off by it? Maybe. But look at Brock. I mean, eat it. And you pointed it out in our first attempt to do this show this morning. Um, you know, Brock's 
never been a public person. He's come out publicly and said he just doesn't like people. He prefers right. to be alone. He, I mean, I, when I joke around and say I live in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, where, and I'm familiar with where Brock lives. I used to hunt up in that area and travel through that area for years. He's remote. He really is in the middle of nowhere. And I think he prefers that. So I don't think he's motivated to, to be a public person or is going to try to reclaim his fame, if you will, for lack of a better term. And he's got enough money. He, he doesn't need it. He, obviously, he was going to get back involved in the business again. But if you can put five or seven or $8 million in your bank account after putting in a couple of days work, who's not going to do that if you're physically capable of doing it, whether you love the business or not? If you're smart, you'll do it. Stack that cash. Go buy another farm. Go buy another one of those $700,000 John Deere tractors or whatever they are. Plant more potatoes or soybeans or alfalfa, whatever it is you do on your farm. That's what I would think Brock's going to do. I don't think there's any motivation on his part to try to resurrect his career. A, doesn't need to, and B, doesn't like it anyway. Well, I... uh I know we talked about it a lot last week, but I want to say again, I think a lot of times we fans, not you, but me, Eric, and everybody on my side of the fence as a fan who's commenting on this and has an opinion on social media, I just want to remind everybody that we're not just talking about the television characters that we've grown up with and that we enjoy watching on television or pay-per-view or buying a ticket to see. These quote unquote superstars go home to real families, real wives, real kids, real grandkids, real people. They see at the local hardware store or church or wherever they're going. And they're all sort of affected by this. And I think that is the message that we all need to consider when there's lots of silliness happening about these conversations and the people and the things that's been alleged that kids are going to jump on an iPad and Google their dad or their uncle or their grandfather. And man, it's not good for any of them. Cause as you said last week, they got to go to school and, and, and they're going to apply for jobs and they're going to have to make a resume with a certain last name. And whew, there's a lot of victims on this and it's not just the people who are going to be named in legal documents. It's the households with these parties. It's just, uh, it's bad from every angle there. And it's, you know, and, and I said this last week and I want to reiterate it because yeah, you're, I mean, it's the kids, you know, as, as adults, you go through things in life, you know, consciously or subconsciously, at least that no matter how bad things are get are going to get, you know, or you believe that eventually this too shall pass that comes with experience. A 16 year old kid doesn't have that experience. A 12 right. year old kid doesn't have that experience. A, a, a 25 year old young man or woman doesn't have that experience. So even though they're not involved, they're not named, but they're related either by friendship or by blood, they're in, in a way not to equate victims here, but they're victims too. Different kind of different kind of victim, but they're victims too. And this is the part, this is the part I immediately thought about even before we started recording last week. There are people that I know in WWE that I know are good people. Yes. They're good people that have been there for so long and it's, it's affecting them as well. Yes. Now they can resign. They can leave if, if it's so bad, but again, they shouldn't have to. That's right. It's, it's, and I'm not going to name names because that's unfair to them, but every one of them is probably walking around on eggshells, hoping that when that phone rings and that number comes up that they don't recognize that it's not the FBI wanting to have a conversation. People that have been around there a long time are probably going to be the questioned yeah. one way or the other by somebody and who nobody's going to want to do that. And they're living in, it's sort of Democules or Democules, whatever his name was. Um, that that's to have that sword hanging over your neck and, and being fearful of that and getting sucked into something you had really nothing to do with. 
Right. Shitty as hell. Shitty as hell. Well, listen, I, um, I don't know what to expect. I know that you and I are not experts in talking about things like this. So we wanted to get it out of the way right up top today. I knew there were new wrinkles. I fear there will continue to be new wrinkles. I like you want this to be put to bed. Um, again, not in an effort to hush anyone or silence anyone, but just to give some peace to all parties involved. And I'm talking about the defendants. I'm saying their families and more importantly, the victims and their families, you and I took a little bit of criticism, uh, last week when you said, you know, you just want this to hurry up and and be done with the idea being, you know, I hope we can, we can settle and move on. The idea being, we're not trying to minimize what happened, but I think everyone agrees that nobody wants these victims to have to be deposed and, and go on the stand and be cross-examined and have to relive all this stuff. It's, uh, it'd be a lot better if they could find a way to find whatever resolution that is, whether they're looking to put somebody behind bars or get a check or both or whatever, whether it's civil or criminal or whatever. I'm like you, man. I, I wish we could just fast forward the ugliness, but it doesn't feel like that's possible. Anytime. You know what? It, it, I don't think it is. No, it's, it's, it's not going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be talking about this for the next probably six months. 